Welcome. So this is going to be another video of my KT Boundary events. I've been talking about basically other things besides Chicxulub that occurred at the KT Boundary and the general concept of a KT Boundary supernova of a system on the surface of the Earth that is a micro star, if you will, that was formed by currents that literally in its fractal dimension as a star supernova on the surface of the planet in the Pacific Ocean as a sphere that was like a micro planet, really. So because all systems function the same, planets can also supernova, atoms can supernova, we just call it different things, radioactive decay, an excited electron, uh, planetary supervolcano, for instance, with Venus, expansion of Earth, and that is another example of the process on different scales. And so, now, in those videos I went through here, I'm just going to real quickly go through this list again to get back to a new list that I posted today, which is what I'm going to talk about. I've been, I spent the morning just kind of looking around at KT Boundary uh, papers. I should probably, anyway. At KT Boundary papers on Google Scholar and like searching around, and I managed to like find some an entry points to like larger quantities of information that was interesting, I guess. So I found a lot of stuff. So. Chicxulub impact crater, 66 million years. What else happened there is basically what I'm looking into. Nader crater, so another crater, crater number two. Nader crater, offshore. Mind you, every link I have here is almost entirely, almost entirely. I tried to, but as best as I could. If I could not find the information in a technical paper, then not. But Nader crater offshore uh, and then they this paper specifically approximately the same age as the Chicxulub crater so significantly this one is simultaneous ish voltage crater is another if i click this again another end cretaceous impact and there basically occurred the Chicxulub so this paper is even correlating the craters and since then, maybe not at this point yet, I'm not, I'm not sure, this might not overlap. It's been basically determined that they don't quite overlap, so they're just like, well, they're not quite the same time. <clears throat> Shiva crater, uh, or in this paper, Shiva structure, a possible KT boundary impact crater. So that's, what, one Chicxulub, two Nader crater, three Boltish crater, four Shiva crater. Craters impact craters at least theorized so we'll come back to that because i found some more the deck and traps are data so then the deck and traps which i've talked about in depth in my other videos anything gear, gear nar related mostly in my gear nar playlist like this playlist but gear nar mount gear nar Or Dwarka, both of them, but the Dwarka is more general. Girnar is more precisely that region. At this point, Dwarka is practically everything because it's all about the Earth expansion process after a vortex weapon was used to attack ancient Dwarka. Puncturing the mantle, causing an outflow that then caused the Earth to expand. I know which crescendoed around 66 million years when the rapid expansion began, which is really when the supernova of the Earth itself began to rapidly go through its expansion phase, where from around 600 million to 66, there's a much slower expansion. It's like a slow phase of a supernova. 
66 million and after is the the rapid phase because essentially the bonds holding the single landmass of the crust together are under so much stress from internal pressure pushing outflows of mantle underneath the crust causing stress that then collide under the crust physically and break through boundaries to like break them apart so that at 66 million years the stress on the system is able to just like break the final bonds which is what these craters really are i've talked about how they're like many on the edge of the continents which are like suggestive that there is like a boundary aspect to these things we're at like the boundaries of like basically atoms of a different scale i know <laughs> but like basins a basin at the boundary of a basin is like a container and those containers of adjacent basins seem to have like physical energetic bonds that can break and when they do it happens in a way where it can form what we see as a crater that's my interpretation um i don't know but so let's go on the deck and traps and then within the deck and traps all, all sorts of uh plutonic complexes uh and then i put in some basins and mountains suggestive of like Bighorn Mountains is very much in that time frame. The opening of the margin between Greenland and Canada, North America. I don't know. I say I said North America, but I'm pretty sure Greenland is part of North America. But I assume people can understand what I mean, even though they might judge me to a point where like this person's not a reliable source of information. They said Greenland and North America, and these two are part of one. I cannot accept anything here on out because. I'm a <laughs> so this thing opened at six and began like sinistral faulting uplifting and spreading with major vulcan mechanics at 66 million so I'm just like let's see paleocene spreading center i don't want to go through it and find the exact thing but like I didn't reference them if I was just making up that the reference said it. Like, that's not actually <laughs> defensible. So, like, the references said these things. Trans-Sahara Seaway in that time frame. Paleomagnetic inclination of Rangelia indicates motion ending around that time frame, which is interesting. Almost like the... It's... The system is ejecting energy into this region of uh, British Columbia, pretty much Alaska, um, and it's no longer able to move the system. So instead, like the system push, essentially, there's a, there here's this mass, and here's this other system that's about to supernova. And it because currents are on it. And it's physically applying a current, back current through them. Like most of the currents directed this way. But a portion flows up this way and in like a narrow channel, which really produces the Baja BC movements and possibly also the like outflow in this way in a way where it's like radioactively decaying, perhaps leading to some like supernova events that is at 65 million, but really is occurring probably because this is pushing material. This is before this region opens. <clears throat> So, 65 million here. So, before any of this is here, anything here is there. Any of this, here's North America, Central America. For any of this region, 
fills the space between this is the boundary over here where there's this like system about the supernova that's centrally located here i believe um and formed by currents but then it's pushing baja bc beforehand like around 120 to 65 million it's really like encouraging materials up to this point but then it like runs into resistance where that region has a back pressure sufficient to like cause the this system to maybe deflect currents more so down to like sever this region i think this was already opening though just basically enough to break bonds at that point when this region is filled maybe like once this region fills then the pressure just starts to be distributed elsewhere inclusive of the region of Chicxulub, perhaps. Um, not sure exactly why a bond would be breaking there specifically. Uh, it's certainly not in the structure that it was. <clears throat> because it was really, like, over here, and then it moves over this way, relatively speaking. And there, like, the this region, let's see, I guess it's leading into 65 million, it's moving into position, just based on the Panama Canal related, or Panama Canal, Panama, I just add canal, because that's like the only thing I know of Panama. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, onset of dextral slip on north northern splays of the border ranges fault system in the Cordillera on origin considered a gold event. So like a bunch of gold. I, I keep coming across that gold, like a supernova gold was injected into like regions. Marine flooding in southern Wyoming in this time frame. Panama, uh, with respect to the initiation of subduction zone magmatism, 66 million. It's an interesting to note that the accretion of seamounts from the Galapagos hotspot track commenced at 66 million, which is really when the supernova was occurring, which is probably the more precise location of where it is now, the system that was supernovaing. Physically, it removed this like over layer and pushed it off and was exposed as the Galapagos hotspot and then it was just like Psh. it's like a volcano that instead of like pushing through it just slides the roof off and then just <laughs> maybe something of that nature happened that's what I'm kind of thinking <clears throat> But so the Galapagos hotspot has this thing going on, but then I think that's what like did it, and now is more stable as the Galapagos hotspot cooling down relatively and doesn't have all these currents because essentially it was forming under the pressure of current coming underneath North America between North America and South America, and current from I believe this was flowing from up this way some reason i don't like this current that then over time was redirected maybe i'm not sure i think it to like flow from here like at some point maybe it just flowed across or maybe from here Currents flowing this way, down here, and then like going down here through the Solomon Islands and interacting with this region. I'm not quite sure what currents are interacting here. It may actually be more so this current coming from underneath Antarctica, which actually went from the mantle puncture hole in Pakistan down the eastern boundary of Africa, which shaped the boundary pretty much, and then 
westward through uh, South America, which I also have found evidence was a possibly pre-existing type, type of structure, as if like there was a layer, a supportive layer structure already present that really was like had a nucleus generally over here of an ammonite structure that really did like pre-exist and wasn't shaped as much from this process i'm not sure in a way where there's like relating to the argentine margin that i've talked about or will talk about certainly reference the paper um relating to the argentine margin there's some dating that's suggestive of just like sh our structures old, old structures suggestive that there was like an ammonite pathing here um, but essentially, the, besides the point, the current from Af under Africa, eastern boundary, flows into South America, through it, through Antarctica, which was connected over here, up this way, through it, and then all the way into Australia, pretty much here, or maybe it is what's feeding it, like it goes up this way, but it is generally forced to wrap around like that. Or like that. Just essentially it's producing an ammonite structure here. The currents colliding. What exactly is happening is very hard to like account for all the potential currents and then like be like, okay, these currents, these are exactly the things going on in every place. Very much to account for. <laughs> that there's currents doesn't take quite as much to account for just to like recognize it. Like for instance, here, like this is caused by a current. There's no explanation for this except for a current. Like, this is what water does. So, therefore, a current is present and did it. At some point, a current did it. A current did it. Same here. Like, we can see the current flows. Like, a current did it. Currents did it. Like, that's why the structures are as they are, where there's basically a high density pink. This is like a lot of material. Blue is a void, a lack of material. So there's like places where current flowed and places where current mounded material around the flows, producing a layer. That is clear as day. Exactly what was going on over here. A little tricky. <laughs> okay, let's get back to the data though. So Panama, Galapagos hotspot, like probably related, forming the Caribbean's relative motion between North America and South America with at least a component of divergence until 66 million. Uh, Wind-blown dust was deposited on the mid-Pacific mountains for, until 66 million, which are these things which I've talked about being over here in other places with the some anything to do with a dragon uh, probably in recent videos but the dragon taking flight that one <laughs> through the siphoncle <laughs> Uh, I can't wait till you guys notice my hilarity. <laughs> Dude's hilarious. Yeah, I've been uh, dropping some hilariousnessnesses. Okay, pardon me. <laughs> Footprints of the dragon. That's probably more actually related to what I was just talking about. Okay. <laughs> Uh, main island of New Caledonia submerged between that time frame. I've also found New Caledonia in other references. I don't think I bothered to cite since then. That's generally around 66 million. And then the mean age of oceanic crust, uh, 64.2. So if there's a supernova, the rapid expansion occurs afterwards, then maybe there is this, like, 
general half and halfness to it or in in the age or the, maybe not not half and half like the average age is very much like a pretty close to when it happened and maybe it just slowed down after there okay so now Additional geological events dated to 66 million. A major step in Himalaya's mountain formation process occurred. Which is basically like a the compaction view PDF let's see We report paleomagnetic data showing that an intra-oceanic trans-Tethian subduction zone existed south of the Eurasian continent and north of the Indian subcontinent until at least Paleocene time. This system was active between 66 and 62. Which also, Chicxulub isn't just 66. We, we gotta clarify that. Chicxulub. find this. Oh, did I close it? I closed it, I think. Did I? Basically, what I'm getting at is I saw, like, possible, da, da, da. hydrothermal. Okay, that's probably a good one. PDF. Basically, it wasn't just 66 million. It wasn't like impact and then like a few like thousand years later, effects in the region are gone. It's kind of like everything else I'm coming across where it's more like pronounced and duration wise. Longer durations. Uh. Just looking to see if there's any real quick, like, four, two million years. And et cetera, like other, like, basically until 60 million, I believe, radiometric dating, there was, in the paper I was looking at, maybe 62, that's high ball it or low ball it, 62, like at least 62 million, there was effects going on in the Chicxulub region that are like very, uh, very much like what, like how this is extended, it's not just like boom, okay. So that's going on in the Himalayas mountain formation process. The Tibetan Plateau has a region called this region, Dianzong Formation, a formation, and this was formed there's at least that, I, somewhere in there it says the numbers I put <laughs> here it is, the newly discovered formation formed 63 to 66 million so there's some the Tibetan Plateau also has a major formation seemingly f occurring in, in, uh, along it in that time frame, which made me think like it's kind of like a backstop, like as the pressure 
current brings material into the region it just like fills as the tibetan plateau region but then like the current is forced south more further south which then runs into the from this essentially there's a current coming this way through here hitting a boundary that's formed by the current going this way that then is caused to deflect around it and off of this thing and vibrationally because this is like a gasket that fills that then outgasses when the pressure builds so that this boundary moves as I've talked about with regard to the Himalayas and so it cre creates literally the Himalayas and the Tibetan Plateau also. So maybe it just kind of filled the Tibetan Plateau enough in that time frame to like redirect pressure southward, which really was what was necessary as part of the process of building the Himalayas. Another formation at the 66 million time frame, the Alps have several locations with apparent ages of around 66 million. Uh, three papers that I reference here, all, all of them Western Alps, I noticed. I didn't bother to look around to see what if that was uh, like a trend beyond that, but probably... Uh, like if Eastern Alps also has 66 million though, I didn't bother, didn't even try to look, I just moved on from it. But the Alps, Western Alps especially at least, have locations in the 66 million time frame. Let's just check this one out for instance. Parent ages up to, so up to, like that's when it kind of starts having something going on there is 66 million so I'm even more importantly than just this vague statement with apparent ages approximately 66 million I didn't actually specify up to which is an important thing of it like if it's some process that either begins or ends at 66 million doesn't just like is this like blip like an impact if, but a process that changes, especially in the, a mountain building process of not just the Himalayas, the Himalayas, the Rockies, the Alps, possibly Andes Mountains, although I don't think I reference anything. It's generally dated to uh, younger, but I am pretty sure I've came across mentions of things more in the 66 million time frame as well i'm just not as like a overall age so maybe like it be had some things going on around 66 million in the andes but like the prolificness of it all made it appear younger because the prolific phase of its building was actually afterwards for some like almost like it sent out an energy and then afterwards it came back to where it sent it out from but the opposite direction and that was around maybe 60s or like 40s 30s millions radiometric dating because it was actually not like um that much time it just wasn't okay then i talked about yesterday in my video I probably talked about this, the Argentine margin yesterday. I'm pretty sure I talked about this. I was tired. <laughs> so I talked about this in that video, which was probably a pretty lame. Pardon me. I'm like, no one's going to watch this. I'll just post it, whatever. Um, Meraki boulders. I talked about this especially. The, this is interesting. These boulders date to 66 million. Uh, what, and then this one is what probably, I think, the only reference that is not paper but is instead just a youtube video but like i'm pretty sure geologists so maybe if i went to specifically try to find his work he probably actually talks about this and his work so that if i had done that but i did i just kind of searched for vague terms and couldn't find the information in the paper so i just 
what I, I'm like, pretty much like, well, you know, like all these other references, and this is a geologist. It's good enough. If someone, if someone goes through everything else and manages to even notice this is a YouTube video, <laughs> they, like maybe they scroll through, like they physically mouse over. That's one way to be like, okay, this one's a YouTube video. <laughs> Comment anyway. <laughs> no one's even bothering to notice. I was honestly thinking about making a technical paper about this. I could just reference all this. Literally just reference all this. Be like, what's up, dudes? We gonna talk about this or nah? Here's my suggestion. <laughs> That's the problem is I can't do the here's my suggestion part. People like, Psh. Okay, Lee Curtis, yep, 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 okay, what is, oh, yep, okay, central and western Solomon Islands, composed of ex exceptionally thick succession of lower Cretaceous to Holocene rocks. I don't know if they say more than that, or if that's basically, whoa. That's uh, whatever. It's kind of general, but essentially, I'm also covering general things. I don't want to ignore it just because people are like, it's too like general. All right. Formation of this region included eruptions from 66 to 46. Uh, that's okay. Hopefully someone, if someone cares, they can do what I just did right there. Uh, let's just search 66. That might be the only time it actually uses that date. Why did I put 46? Did I put 46? 46. <laughs> Maybe it was just based on the period. I just thought it said Holocene. Late Cretaceous. I guess I should have put 50. So, I mean, I just extended it to make it less exact than it is in, the, in a way where it's beneficial, really, like, towards what I'm saying, that it's actually more towards 50 than 46. 50 is actually... A very specific time that I'm coming across in like Baja BC related and other things. So maybe there is like a specific aspect to the 50 that matters where I didn't reference it here. So now it's like maybe I should edit that. Let's just let's just keep going. Louisville Louisville Seamount chain. So a Pacific Ocean Seamount chain contains the Osborne Seamount at the western end of the chain, with which it has rocks dated to 66 million. So the westernmost rocks of or Seamount it starts at 60 million to I think to generally towards present-ish. I'm not sure when this formed. Covering a time span, that made me think it's just generally across till approximately present because it's probably a, I'm not even sure like what this is. I haven't really thought about this one. Yet.
Looks like it's related to here. Like uh, where the dragon has some like thing passing through it. Let's go to maps. <laughs> it really looks like it's like literally this current continued. Which I kind of associated with coming from here and then deflecting down this way. Running into here. I'm not sure what to make of it all. I wonder what age some of this stuff is. I know this is around 120 to 66 million. This stopped forming at 66 million thereabouts. I believe I might be mistaken. Certainly, the wind blown things stopped forming there. I'm not sure if that's when a lot of things stopped. I suspect, but I'm not sure. Uh, wherever here is really through, like this current coming down, making the Himalayas down this way. Also, generally, there's a current that flows with this width. That hits like this boundary pretty much. That doesn't go down to the this region and instead cuts across here. And we can see it here and here. And basically flows into where the Mariana Trench is formed, so it causes it. But then it flows into this region, which another, the current from under Central America, under Mexico, pretty much around here, starting around Florida, literally, like here, maybe, in this region, under... This is like the Yucatan Peninsula separation. Through here, maybe uh, like right there. <coughs> hmm. Um, I don't know, let's move on, I'll come back, I'm definitely gonna, I gotta eat, I, gotta, I haven't eaten yet, it's freaking 2 o'clock, what am I doing, I'm just gonna finish this list, okay, these are cool, so let's, I'll come back to that probably in the next video or so, so soon. This just sounds very important to really look at further. Some more gold, gold and copper deposits. Uh, not this one, and this one. And now, back to impacts. We got four impacts. Five impacts, or at least suspected impacts possible impact structure at the KT boundary. So, uh, this is the same one. Different paper. Six impacts. The silver pit crater. Uh... 
Although this one is con controversial because it's span, it looks to span a larger time. <clears throat> and I came across a paper that maybe would be, it seemed very important. Like, maybe I can find it. Or a basin, pull apart basin. Basically, they're suggesting it could be an impact, which would be basically from below because it's not an impact. Or maybe it's like a pull apart basin. So, like, it almost, because it was a slower process, it's more visible as this, like, it lasted for a long time. So, it's hard to make it to label it an impact structure when it formed across a long period of time. How can we label out an impact structure? But it looks like one. <laughs> so it's like maybe it's a pull apart basin. Basically, that's what I'm getting at. And so, like, the process of a pull apart basin and an impact structure and their formation is probably very much alike. That's all. Okay. And so, like, when we keep coming across this concept of an impact structure that seems to have an extended age, then maybe it makes sense from that kind of angle because it's undercurrents producing this kind of thing <clears throat> by, like, swelling up at specific points of joints almost, some boundary, like, sort of like... Uh, like here, there's these little, there's like literal tabs that run along the boundary here that then within the tabs have like central nodes where like maybe current goes like through uh, void spaces that are less dense material than the surrounding that kind of form in ways like this that then like allow for upwelling through the nodes that then break the bonds because it's actually in a bond in some way and energetically that makes it way cool okay so that's six impacts we're going one-handed so six Maybe some coffee will help my stomach. Okay, this one. Late Cretaceous Astroblem, which I had to look up. What is an Astroblem? An eroded remnant of a large crater by an impact. So again, another seven KT boundary impact craters because this one is 70 plus or minus five and probable late Cretaceous. I don't, let's see if they mention Chicxulub at all. Can I search this now? Uh, it doesn't matter if they mention it. I just was curious if they did. Okay, um, so there's seven. Jabal Hadid structure. Probably post early Cretaceous to pre Pliocene. So this one is not well aged, but it's basically aged by saying it has to have formed after, I believe. Uh, at least after these early Cretaceous deposits or formations there that are present, and then before the, the Pliocene formation of rivers. So, like, it's hard, it hasn't been precisely determined when this one happened, but I, I've basically I put it on the list because it's essentially... Let's see if we can find more like specific dates within it. I just don't have that kind of analysis, I don't think.
Circular feature displays concentric uh, annular ridges and formed within flat-lying Nubian sandstone, most likely lower Cretaceous Nubian series as host of the structure together with a paleo river system of probably late Miocene to Pliocene age that intercuts constrain the formation age. So they just don't, this is not a step like determined. And then I found this one in this paper probably I was like, hmm. So then that's, what was that? Four, five, six, seven, eight, ten biter impact is poorly constrained is less than 66 million by stratigraphy, the youngest geological unit affected by the event being approximately 66 million. Nine, twin impact structure dates previously to 60 to 70 million and has been considered as a possible KT boundary event. Uh, I'm pretty sure I, yeah, may even be associated with the KT boundary event. So what was that? 9, 10, 11, including a twin, which is so cool. And then this one in the Congo, which is just simply not really aged very well. Structure can be constrained to the late Cretaceous Cenozoic, according to the youngest units in which the ring structure was formed. But there's no there's no dating that's occurred here to like pinpoint the process. So twelve is it? Twelve impacts? At 66 million on top of the Deccan Traps, the Rockies, Himalayas, the Alps. On top of just all of that really shows... It was not just Chicxulub. And I've been saying. It was a supernova. <laughs> as ridiculous as it sounds. Because I'm using a term that is specific to stars. but It's a fractal. I use it in a fractal manner. It's not intended as a literal star supernova that I'm describing, but it's intended as a literal parallel of a supernova that is a supernova. It is. It's just it's acknowledging that it fractally is by using the term while not like implying that it literally is a star. Because it wasn't a star. That's the aspect. It's not a star, even though I call it supernova. That's the point. Not a star, even though I call it supernova. But it was a supernova because it had. It's ex it's exactly what it was. It, it deposited all sorts of a, a KT boundary layer that has high iridium, high platinum group elements. Maybe it's missing plutonium in ways that I've yet to research well enough to understand why I really feel like it probably, it, there is probably a reason that it, either it's like localized where it was like distributed in like deposits rather than in the layer so much, but I don't know if that makes sense. Or just, I don't know. I don't know. It just, essentially, it doesn't mean just because we didn't find the plutonium that there wasn't a supernova that caused it. And <clears throat> and maybe there the, the plutonium is present. I've been looking in, like, seamount chains. Or seamount chains. Seamount 
or just ocean seabed, sorry. Ocean seabed has some papers about plutonium, for instance. Ocean seabed plutonium 244. Possible cosmic dust origin. So, like, there's. Uh, Whether or not this is Ooh. so it's it's plausible that we found it and just haven't made the connection yet to like, it would need someone saying the 66 million, 65 million as some sort of, like, suggestion for when it was deposited. Or 60 million, something more proximal to the supernova event. Certainly closer to 66, the better. I haven't seen anyone make any reference to anything like that, though. I don't know. Okay, so 12, 12 impact craters, uh, therefore it wasn't Chicxulub. Really, I don't know what kind of standard deviation, you know, proof positive we're looking for here, but uh, yeah. <laughs>